Last week, I put out a video asking you all, if money wasn't a factor, which compact camera would you choose? The most common answer was the Leica Q3. But let's be real, money is a factor, which is why a lot of folks said, realistically, they'd probably choose the Sony a7CR for its versatility. So that got me thinking, what if we could turn the Sony a7CR into a Leica Q3, but still keep all of that versatility and do so at a fraction of the cost? Well, today we're gonna do just that. Let's get into it. Okay, so when thinking about the Leica Q3, there's a few things that make it stand out as a special camera that people lust after. There's the lens, the small and compact design, the Leica colors, and the overall, I guess you could call it like the vibes, the branding, just overall like how it looks and how it makes you feel. So I want to address how we can achieve all of these things with the Sony a7CR, and then I'll quickly cover a few reasons why I think the a7CR actually outperforms the Leica Q3. And if you stick around to the end, I've got a free little bonus that I've made just for you. So let's first talk about the lens. The Leica Q3 features the 28 millimeter f1.7 Sumalux lens. It's insanely sharp, crushes in low light, and has incredible color rendering. It's got a dedicated aperture ring, macro functionality, the ability to switch from autofocus to manual focus directly on the lens, and given how well it performs, it's actually quite compact. One thing I've pointed out in my previous videos about the Leica Q series cameras is the 28 millimeter field of view is actually much closer to a 24 or 26 millimeter on other cameras. While we could opt for the Sony 28 millimeter F2 as our Leica knockoff, I haven't done so for a few reasons. Mostly because it's not actually quite accurate to the field of view that we get in Leica, but it's also quite old and missing a lot of the added functionality that we're gonna be looking for. Instead, I've opted to pair it with the Sony 24 millimeter F2.8 G. It features a dedicated aperture ring, which can be clicked or declicked, a manual focus switch, and programmable focus hold button. It also has a minimum focusing distance of 18 centimeters, which is in line with the Leica Q3's minimum focusing distance of 17 millimeters when in macro mode. Now, we do lose a little over a stop of light from the f2.8 maximum aperture compared to the 1.7 on the Q3. But I've found that the a7CR performs much better in low light, both from how well it performs in higher ISO situations and the image stabilization compared to the Q3. Sony's image stabilization is far more reliable with seven stops of in-body image stabilization, whereas the Leica has optical image stabilization built onto the lens. The Leica OIS isn't officially rated in terms of the number of stops of stabilization it provides, but most tests show that it's only about a stop or two, so you can't really go below like 1 60th of a second handheld and expect reliable results. All that's to say, I think you'll find the f2.8 aperture to be more than sufficient on this lens. That brings me pretty nicely to the second point, which is the small and compact design of the Leica Q3. When pairing with the 24 millimeter G, the a7CR is effectively the same dimensions as the Leica Q3. I'll say the build of the Q3 is definitely a little bit more rugged. It's basically a full metal body. It's very well weather sealed and everything from the buttons to the tiltable screen really give you that kind of German engineering feel. All of that makes the Q3 slightly heavier at 743 grams to this Sony combo weighing in at 677 grams, likely not something that you'd be able to actually feel unless you were holding them side by side. One added benefit of the a7CR is you actually get a decent grip, whereas the Q3 is actually a bit tricky to hold straight out of the box. You do have options like the wireless charging grip or the thumb rest grip, either of which is pretty much needed if you want to prevent yourself from dropping it. Personally, I've always opted for a thumb grip, but it is going to come with the like a price tag. Like I paid $250 for this little piece of brass. I mean, it looks cool, but wow. Speaking of looks, many Leica fanboys love to go on about the Leica look. This is typically said in reference to the look of the images with their rich contrast, fantastic rendering, and beautiful color science. And don't worry, we'll get to that in a minute. There's also the look that the Leica itself tends to have when it's hanging around your neck. Leicas get a certain level of response from people when they see you with one, even from people who know nothing about cameras. So can you recreate that 
with the a7cr. First things first, I picked up this Leica style lens hood that's specifically designed for the smaller G primes. It's from a brand called Hoagi or Hoji or something, and it comes with a Leica style lens cap that's fitted perfectly for it as well. And if you look at them side by side, it's pretty much identical. You might also want a Leica style strap. Well, the issue with the official Leica straps is they're between 80 and $170. So instead, I have an option linked in the description that's only $13. It's not quite as high-end as the official Leica strap, but it'll get the job done nicely. Or if you want something that is a little bit more high-end, but way more functional, there's these rope straps from this company called Lido Howler that integrate a Peak Design clip. They're made to order from this dog leash company, and they're a little on the pricier side, but having the ability to quickly take it on and off, it's great. Okay, so looking cool is great and all, but the real thing that matters most is of course the image itself. Both of these cameras feature fantastic 60 megapixel sensors, but Leica has long been adored for their exceptional color science. Sony, on the other hand, has made some very strong improvements to their color science over the years, but it's not quite Leica quality. But what if we could get them to match? Well, I spent quite a bit of time getting them to do just that. What I've done is created a custom profile in Lightroom that converts Sony raw images into Leica raw images. All you have to do is import the profile into Lightroom and then choose it from the drop-down menu under user profiles. This doesn't affect any of your other sliders in Lightroom. It just gets you to the same starting place as if you were to open a Leica file in Lightroom. So you can now edit to your heart's content or use any of your existing presets or mine, which I'll link in the description as well. The profile is completely free to download, but it would be super nice if you hit subscribe and play the more with the like button as a free way to say thank you. Now, I will warn you that it's going to be impossible to create a profile that perfectly matches the Q3 because of the hardware, the way each camera is gonna interpret colors, and then like the dynamic range variations, and even the way that they both handle white balance. But I spent a ton of time getting this very, very close. And comparing these Sony files and Leica files side by side, you can see how much the profile really helps to match them. So with all of this together, is the Sony a7CR actually better than the Leica Q3? Honestly, probably. The Leica Q3 remains a luxury. It's best as a secondary or even like third fun camera to be used for everyday use by people who either have way too much money to spend or just really like collecting cameras. While the Q3's autofocus has made some substantial upgrades from its predecessors, the A7CR is vastly superior thanks to the AI autofocus chip. The Q3 is also much improved in video, but honestly, I still prefer grading S-Log3 on the Sony cameras, and the Q3 doesn't even have a microphone jack if you want to get better audio. You also have literally hundreds of other lenses at your disposal if you want to take this from a fun everyday camera into a true workhorse. But let's assume you're gonna go with this build I've put together for you here. You're looking at $3,000 for the A7CR body, 600 for the 24 millimeter G lens, 45 for the lens hood, $80 for even the most expensive rope leash, and free 99 for the Sony to Leica Lightroom profiles. All in, you're looking at around $3,700, which means you could still afford a couple of extra lenses and still not surpass the $6,000 price point of the Leica Q3. So yeah, with all that said, which do you prefer? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.